okay welcome back to the lectures on uh, Fourier transform and now today uh, we will continue the idea of Fourier uh, series for a for a function which uh, are not a periodic function so basically this Fourier series representation is given for a function uh, which is a periodic and now we will go for the extension of this period. So, if, if we let this period goes to infinity, then we will get a non-periodic function and we will see what will be the representation in that case. So, let me uh, just continue with this Fourier series uh, representation of a function. So, in that case we had for a periodic function of period of period 2 L, the Fourier series is given as f x a naught by 2 and k from 1 to infinity a k cos k pi x over L plus b k sin k pi x over l where this a k and b k is this Fourier coefficients are given by the integrals. So, like 1 over l minus l 2 l f x cos k pi x over l d x k 0 1 2 and so on b k was again 1 over l minus l 2 plus l f x and sin k pi x over l. And so, now the question is that if we want to have a Fourier series expansion uh, or, or let us say for example, if uh, we want to have Fourier series expansion of uh, let us say exponential minus modulus x which is valid in minus l 2 l. <coughs> so, if we look at the graph of this function, so we have a uh, period we have a symmetric function because e power minus modulus x. So, in this side also we have this and to get the Fourier series of this function we will go for uh, its continuation as a periodic function and so on to this side as well. And then we find the Fourier series uh, as given here. So, in that case we will uh, get this representation a naught by 2 and this a k and cos k pi x over l and this will be valid for this function minus l 2 l. This can represent this function in this range on the in this interval. This a k and b k one can calculate uh, with the help of these given integrals, but now the point is that this is a uh, the function was given from minus l to l. So, uh, as this extension we have, so the function this becomes a periodic function of period 2 l. But now, what will happen if we let? So, if we let this l tends to infinity, for any l, this we can uh, represent this function by this Fourier series but this is the limiting case that what will happen as l tending to infinity. Just note that in that case we cannot have this periodic continuation in that case we have a non periodic function. So, so we will see today that we can still represent this function as l tending to infinity and then instead of this sum and the series we will get an integral form something and this is called the Fourier integral Fourier integral and this will be valid for for all x from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, this is the the main uh, objective of this lecture that how to 
represent a non periodic function uh, with the idea what we had already in the last lecture of Fourier series. So, let me just uh, continue now uh, with this for. So, again we consider any periodic function periodic function we denote now f l x this l denotes uh, the period because for period 2 l we have uh, the following extension. So, f l is a function of period 2 l that can be represented. So, that is what we assume this can be represented by a Fourier series <coughs> by a Fourier series that f l x is a naught by 2 plus n 1 to infinity and we have a n cos n pi x over l and plus b n and we have sin n pi x over l. So, this is the Fourier series corresponding to this function of period 2 l and we denote this function uh, by f l x. So, in a more general case that this f l we uh, f l x we can uh, uh, replace by uh, the uh, by the uh, mean value of this function at this x. So, if the function is now defined or is discontinuous at x. So, we can have here f l x plus and plus f l x minus divided by 2. So, we can have this average value here. Now, the question is that what will happen uh, if we let l to infinity. <coughs> so, first we assume assume the non periodic function because as l approaches to infinity we will uh, get a non periodic function uh, obviously. So, periodic function uh, f x as this f x we denote the limit as l approaches to infinity and the function f l x. So, if we assume this and now we pass uh, ok first let us uh, substitute this a n and b n into the function. So, what we have that this f l x is uh, a naught. So, 1 over uh, 1 over l. So, we have 1 over 2 l then minus l 2 l we have f u d u here we have 4 a n 1 over l I take out of this summation and we have then minus l 2 l and f u cos n pi u over l d u and then we have this cos n pi x over l and plus the, the other term here minus l 2 l for that we have f u and sin n pi u over l d u and then the sin n pi x over l. Now, what we do? So, the first uh, term we keep as it is and f u d u plus for the second term here we have these cos and cos. So, cos a cos b and this plus sin a sin b. So, this we can combine into one cos function. So, we have here n 1 to infinity n 1 to infinity and, and uh, we have this integral minus l 2 l also f u is common to both the integrals and here we write uh, this cos uh, a minus b. So, we have n pi over l and u minus x and d u. So, this is uh, still the Fourier uh, series representation just we have rewritten in this form and now we uh, will let the limit l or this uh, period l to infinity. 
so for that we also assume so let me just write down that if we assume that this integral minus infinity to plus infinity and the absolute value of f u and d u converges converges the first term on the right hand side approaches to uh, approaches to 0 as L approaches to infinity. Let us take a look again. So, with this term as L uh, we let to infinity since we have here 1 over L and this we assume a finite quantity. So, this will go to 0. So, we have then this f l x and the left hand side as we take the limit l tending to infinity and we assume that this will be a non periodic function f x. So, we have now the first term is 0 and then we left with l to infinity 1 over l and n 1 to infinity we have minus infinity to plus infinity f u cos n pi u minus x over l d u let us put it equation number 2 that was our equation number 1. So, now there is a, a trick here. So, let us uh, uh, let me explain you very clearly. So, L to infinity we uh, multiply by pi here. So, pi over L and then we have the summation n 1 to infinity. So, this 1 over pi we have to accommodate here. So, 1 over pi and then this minus infinity to plus infinity f u and we have cos n pi over l and u minus x d u. So, now the point is that just for the simplicity if we assume that this f alpha f alpha is 1 over pi 1 over pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f u and cos uh, alpha u minus x. So, alpha u minus x d u and also we assume that this pi over l term which is sitting here and also we have here pi over l. So, this pi over l we uh, take as uh, delta alpha if we denote by this. So, what we get after these new notations and also we note that also note that as this delta alpha uh, approaches to 0 as L approaches to infinity. So, where we have a L approaches to infinity because we have the relation between this L and delta alpha. So, as this L approaches to infinity delta alpha approaches to 0. So, what f x we get now? So, f x is limit L to infinity we have now limit delta alpha to infinity or delta alpha to 0 for this L infinity and we have pi over L and that is delta alpha. So, let me put again inside the summation. So, here n 1 to infinity and we have delta alpha and this 1 over pi and this quantity in terms of this f. So, it is just simply where alpha is here we have n and pi over l pi over l is delta alpha. So, this is n delta alpha. So, we have f n and delta alpha. Okay, so, now it is uh, interesting to see that what uh, exactly the summation is. So, this f is a sum function 
of this alpha uh, for a, a given x actually. So what we see now that okay let me just write again. So we have limit delta alpha to 0 and n 1 to infinity and we have delta alpha f n delta alpha. So we just look at this a summation. So we have n is equal to 1. So the value of this f at d alpha. So we let, let me start from this. Uh, so 0 and we have here this delta alpha. So value of this function is delta alpha. Let's so we can have this form of uh, this f. So let's assume that this is f. This is the graph of this f. So what we are doing here that f when n is one. So f delta alpha this value and then multiplying by delta alpha. So basically getting this area here. this area and then again n is 2. So, we summing up with the f 2 alpha. So, we go again alpha and we add. Now, we take this integral. So, this uh, uh, area of this uh, rectangle and so on. So, for the 3 alpha so, here we have 2 delta alpha, we have 3 delta alpha and this area. So, now the question is that if this delta alpha, we let this delta alpha to 0 and this is exactly the definition of uh, Riemann integral that if this delta alpha tends to 0, this area which uh, at present we have these, uh, uh, this will be here. So, 3 delta alpha and then multiplied by delta alpha. So, area of this rectangle. So, in that case, now if we let this uh, delta alpha to 0, this summation will give us the area under this curve and that we can write exactly in the integral form. So, this f x is nothing than it is a 0 to infinity, this integral 0 to infinity of this function f alpha d alpha and now we uh, go back to the original notation. So, f alpha was defined 1 over pi and 0 to infinity and here we have for the f alpha minus infinity to infinity we have f u we have cos alpha u minus x d u and d alpha. <coughs> and then we can. So, this is in fact we, we got a representation and that is uh, already here that we have 1 over pi and 0 to infinity minus infinity to plus infinity f u cos alpha u minus x d u d alpha. But if we expand this cos we get another um, uh, form. So, we have 0 to infinity and then we have minus infinity to to infinity f u cos alpha u cos alpha x plus so this i can close here and then we have again uh, cos alpha u cos alpha x we have here and then the sin alpha u and sin alpha x will go to the second integral minus infinity to plus infinity and f u sin alpha u d u. So, here d u is missing and then d u and sin alpha x and then we have at the end d alpha for this integral. Now, what we do that if we assume that this with 1 over pi and this one is a alpha and again with 1 over pi and 1 over pi and with this if we assume this b alpha. So, we can write in a compact form that this f x is 
is 0 to alpha and we have a alpha cos alpha x cos alpha x plus b alpha sin alpha x and d alpha and where alpha is 1 over pi minus infinity plus infinity f u cos alpha u d u and we have b alpha is 1 over pi minus infinity plus infinity f u and uh, sin alpha u d u. So, this is the Fourier uh, integral representation of a function and now we will go again discuss uh, the some convergence issue. So, it is more or less we started with the Fourier series uh, idea. So, the convergence uh, most of the assumptions will remain same, but we have made one extra assumption and that was the that the integral must converge uh, that absolutely. So, we let us summarize this theorem. So, we assume that f is piecewise continuous and one sided derivatives of f exist at each point on every finite interval on the x axis and let f be absolutely integrable on minus infinity to plus infinity that is this f u d u converges then for each x on the entire axis what we have that this 1 over pi 0 to infinity minus infinity to plus infinity and I am writing again in this compact form. So, cos alpha u minus x d u d alpha this Fourier integral will converge to the average value of the function as the case of Fourier as in the case of Fourier series. So, f x minus and divided by 2. So, we have all other assumptions what we had for the convergence of Fourier series other than this f should be now absolutely integrable because we have used in the proof that if f is absolutely integral then only we have this representation for the function. Now, we go for the example for the function we have f x 0 x and 0 when x is negative and when x is between 0 and 1 and when x is greater than 1. So, find the Fourier integral representation of f integral representation of f and then determine the convergence of the integral at x is equal to 1. So, here if we look at this function here which is defined from minus infinity to plus infinity it is 0 and the negative axis and greater than x is greater than 1 it is again 0. So, we have this is x between 0 and 1 and then we have 0 and also here 0. So, in this case this Fourier series representation uh, in fact uh, is not possible because this function is not periodic and we do not have possibility to make it periodic because the function is given uh, on the whole axis. So, we have this uh, Fourier integral representation and to get that so, we have this f x we can represent by this Fourier integral representation a alpha cos alpha x 
plus b alpha and sin alpha x with this d alpha and we calculate this a alpha that is 1 over pi minus infinity to plus infinity and f u cos alpha u d u this is 1 over pi minus alpha to or we can have the function is 0 uh, in the negative x axis and x is greater than 1. So, what we have basically here 0 to 1 and cos alpha u uh, d u or this function was uh, x. So, we have u cos alpha u d u and this we can integrate. So, 1 over pi and we have this u as it is and the integral of this sin cos so cos alpha u over over alpha and 0 to 1 minus 0 to 1 the differentiation of this is 1 and now sin alpha u over alpha and du so we go further so we have 1 over pi so when this u is 1 we have sin alpha uh, sin alpha over alpha and then 0 it will be 0. So, we have sin alpha over alpha plus 1 over alpha square and so once we integrate again here we will get 1 over alpha square and cos alpha u this will be plus in that case because minus will come uh, after this integration and then we substitute the limit the upper limit will give us cos alpha and then minus 1. So, 1 over alpha square and cos alpha minus 1. So, we have 1 over pi cos alpha plus alpha sin alpha and minus 1 over alpha square. Similarly, we calculate the b alpha that is 1 over pi minus infinity to plus infinity and f u sin alpha u d u 1 over pi 0 to 1 and u sin alpha u d u. So, again we integrate by parts. So, we have u with minus cos alpha u over alpha and these limits 0 to 1 minus 0 to 1 and this minus minus will be plus. So, we have uh, here u will give 1. So, we have cos alpha u over alpha and d u. So, we get 1 over pi and minus cos alpha over alpha minus minus plus. So, u is 0. So, this is uh, gone here. So, we have 1 over alpha square and sin alpha u. So, that is uh, when u is 1 we will get sin alpha and 0 will get 0. So, this is nothing but 1 over pi and sin alpha minus alpha cos alpha over alpha square. So, this Fourier integral representation of that given function is 0 to infinity we have cos alpha plus alpha sin alpha minus 1 divided by alpha square. So, this was a alpha and then we have cos alpha x plus this b alpha sin alpha alpha cos alpha over alpha square and we have sin alpha x and d alpha. So, we can combine this again 1 over pi 1 over pi 0 to infinity and uh, this cos alpha cos alpha x plus sin alpha sin alpha x will give us cos alpha 1 minus x and plus this alpha we take common then we have sin alpha cos alpha x and cos alpha sin alpha x will give us sin alpha 1 minus x and then this minus cos alpha x and divided by alpha square and d alpha. Well, so this is the Fourier hmm, integral representation of the given function and now the question was that uh, determine the convergence of the integral at x is equal to 1. So, now the b part 
and if we look at the function this, this function is not defined at x is equal to to 1 but we this integral will converge in that case to this uh, average value so that's uh, 0 here and 1 so 1 plus 0 by 2 that integral will converge so the function is not defined at x is equal to 1. So, the value of the integral at x is equal to 1 is f 1 plus f 1 minus divided by 2. So, 0 plus 1 by 2. So, what is the integral at at x is equal to 1? Let us just see. So, we will put here x 1 we will get cos alpha if we put uh, only cos uh, alpha into zero, so cos 0 that is 1 and this will be 0 cosine 0 and 1 minus uh, cos alpha. So, this is just uh, 1 minus so integral we have 0 to infinity with 1 over pi and 1 minus cos alpha over that pi and alpha square d alpha. So, integral of this as half. Okay, so we continue the next example. Determine the Fourier integral representing this function f x one and zero when x is between zero and two and when x is less than 0 and x is greater than 2 it is uh, 0. So, between 0 and 2 the function is given by this 1 and then 0 and this side also we have 0. So, further uh, we show that show that that this integral sign alpha over alpha d alpha is pi by 2. So, it is a very similar example what we have seen this. So, we get this a alpha 1 over pi minus infinity to plus infinity and f u cos alpha u du. So, we have 1 over pi and function was defined uh, 0 to 2 only other than this it was 0. So, we have cos alpha u du and that we can uh, simplify to give sine 2 alpha over alpha. Similarly, the b alpha we get 1 over pi minus infinity to plus infinity f u sin alpha u d u. So, this is 1 over pi 0 to 2 and sin alpha u d u and then we have cos alpha u over alpha. So, we will get this pi alpha 1 minus cos 2 alpha. So, this f x we can represent by this Fourier integral 0 to infinity and sin 2 alpha over alpha cos alpha x plus 1 minus cos 2 alpha over this alpha 1 over pi is there and then we have sin alpha x and d alpha. So, we have 1 over pi 0 to infinity. We can again uh, combine these two. So, cos 2 alpha cos alpha and minus cos 2 alpha uh, sin alpha x. So, sin we get alpha and 2 minus x plus the sin alpha x left and divided by alpha and we have d alpha. So, if we substitute here at x is equal to 1, we have f 1 and the value of this function at 1. So, here 0 it was 2. So, at 1 it is the value is 1 because here we have uh, the point of uh, continuity. So, we will get just the functional value there. So, we have uh, this integral 0 to infinity sin. Uh, alpha 
and here also sin alpha so we get 2 sin alpha 2 will take to the right side. So, 2 over pi will be pi by 2 and the function value at 1 and this is 1. So, this integral value is pi by 2. So, this was the sign uh, so, sorry this was the Fourier integral representation of, of a function and now we will go for the particular cases that is uh, Fourier sin and sin and cosine integrals and it is basically the idea what we have uh, for your sin and cosine series. So, if this f x is a odd function that means, this f x is minus f x f minus x is minus f x odd function in that case this a alpha we have minus infinity to plus infinity and f u cos alpha u d u. So, f is odd then and this is even. So, we have a odd integrand and minus infinity to plus infinity will give 0 and this b alpha will be 2 over pi and 0 to infinity instead of minus infinity to plus infinity because now the integrand is uh, even function sin alpha u d u. So, this is odd and this is odd. So, we have even function. So, the integral will be 2 over pi and f u uh, sin alpha u d u. So, in that case this for uh, four year sign representation of that function will be given by 0 to infinity b alpha and sin alpha x d alpha. And similarly, if the function f x is even function even function then b alpha will be 0 and this a alpha will be given by 2 over pi 0 to infinity and we have f u cos alpha u d u b alpha will be 0 and this f x we can represent by the 0 to infinity a alpha and cos alpha x d alpha and this x is between 0 to infinity. So, let us uh, let us quickly uh, go for one example. So, we consider this function f x which is 0 minus 1 1 and 0. So, 0 when minus infinity to minus pi and minus pi to 0 and 1 when 0 to pi and this is 0 when x is greater than pi. <coughs> Okay, so, for this function if we just look at, so we have uh, 0 less than minus pi then the function value is minus, minus 1 then we have plus 1 and then again 0. So, this function is uh, an odd function because this value is uh, minus of this value. So, this function is an odd function and then a alpha will be 0. So, solution. So, we want to have this uh, Fourier integral representation and so a alpha will be 0 and then b alpha if we get so it is 2 over pi 0 to infinity f u sin alpha u d u and this is 2 over pi we have 0 to pi simply and that is value is 1 for f. So, we have sin alpha u d u and this is 2 over pi alpha we have cos alpha u. So, with minus sign so at 0 we will put first we get minus and 1 minus cos alpha pi. Therefore, the Fourier series is Fourier integral representation of Fourier sign integral representation will be given by 2 over pi 0 to infinity 1 minus cos alpha pi or alpha and we have sin alpha x d alpha. So, there was a question that what will be the what will be the value of the integral at x is equal to minus pi. So, value of this integral at x is equal to minus pi we will take the average of 
these two values. So, it is a 0 and minus pi by 2. So, this value will be 0 minus 1 by 2. So, minus half. So, one more example we go find Fourier sine and cosine integral representation for this f x 1 0 for 0 to pi and when x is greater than pi it is 1. So, this function is given it is defined from 0 to uh, infinity only. So, we have one value and then when greater than pi is 0. So, this is a function given and we are interested to find the sin and the cosine integral. So, for the sin integral we will have the even ex uh, sorry the odd extension and for the so, let us just for go for the Fourier sine representation Fourier sine representation in this case. So, we can extend that function which is given here as an odd function. So, this and then 0. So, now for this function or the new function this is the continuation to to that function the given function in the left uh, axis. So, we have this odd extension the odd extension and in this case we will get sin integral representation because for this function a alpha will be 0 and we will get only the f x 0 to infinity b alpha and sin alpha x d alpha and for this we will calculate this p alpha that is 2 over pi 0 to infinity f u and sin alpha u d u. So, this integral so the f u we can go 0 to, to pi and we have sin alpha u d u. So, this will be 2 over pi 1 minus cos pi alpha over alpha. So, this Fourier series representation uh, Fourier uh, integral representation 0 to infinity and we have this b alpha 1 minus cos alpha pi or pi alpha divided by alpha and sin alpha x dx or it is a 2 over pi 0 to infinity 1 minus cos pi alpha over alpha and sin alpha x dx. If you want to see the value of this integral, what will be the value of this integral? So, at x is equal to 0, x is equal to 0 or x is greater than pi or x is greater than pi, x is equal to 0 or x is greater than pi the value would be. So, here the value will be 0 and at this point if we take the average it is going to be again 0. So, the value of this function will be 0 and at, at x is equal to pi. So, at x is equal to pi we will take the average. So, we have 1 and we have 0. So, 1 plus 0 by 2 that means 1 by 2 and what left now between 0 and 1. So, if x is between between 0 and pi then the value is, is 1 value is 1. So, for different values we can get a, a particular integral and can find the value of the function. So, now the second Fourier cosine cosine representation Fourier cosine representation so, in this case uh, we will extend this function as an even function. So, it is an even extension and in this case now b alpha will be 0 and this a alpha we can calculate by 2 over pi and 0 to infinity f u cos alpha u d u. So, we have 2 over pi 
and 0 to 1 cos alpha u du or 2 over pi we have sin alpha u over alpha sin alpha uh, sin alpha u over uh, alpha with negative sign and 0 to 1. So, we have 2 over pi or oh, with plus only because the integral of this cos will be sin alpha u or alpha 0 to. So, we have 2 over pi and we have sin alpha over alpha. Okay, and then this f uh, x we can represent by this 2 over pi 0 to infinity and this uh, in so the, our function was defined between it was 0 to pi. So, we have to have here 0 to pi. So, in that case it will be just pi alpha. So, this Fourier representation Fourier integral representation will be sine this pi alpha and cos pi alpha and divide by alpha d alpha. So, if you want to have the value of this integral, so it will be 1 as usual when this x is uh, between 0 and pi. So, in this case at this 0 also we have the value 1 because it is a function is now continuous at that point also we have the half value at x is equal to pi and we have 0 when x is greater than pi. Okay. So, now we go to a very important topic of this which is uh, uh, just an extension of this study what we are doing now. So, Fourier cosine and sine transform Fourier cosine and sine transform. So, what we have this Fourier integral of a function f x we assume this equality there. So, 2 over pi in general we have this the average value 0 to infinity and uh, let us write in in this form. So, this is the first case for the cosine 1. So, if uh, uh, function f x is an even function then this Fourier cosine representation will be 0 to infinity and 0 to infinity f u cos alpha u d u and then we have this cos alpha x d alpha this is a alpha and this is so 2 over pi this and this. Now, if we set here if we set that f cos we denote this f uh, c f or f c hat function of alpha is square root 2 over pi and this integral 0 to infinity f u cos alpha u d u. So, basically this part and we have taken here is square root 2 over pi d u. So, this part if we name it f c alpha with this hat or later on we will call it the Fourier cosine transform of f and then what we have the f x is equal to again the same factor left over there 0 to infinity f hat c alpha and cos alpha x d alpha. So, this is called the Fourier cosine transform of f and this is here is called we can also write this f cosine inverse of this f hat c alpha. 
So, this is called the Fourier or inverse Fourier cosine transform of F c alpha. Okay, so, now same for the sign representation. So, similarly uh, it follows for odd functions. For odd functions what we have that f s of f s f s alpha denoted and we have 2 over pi and 0 to infinity f u sin alpha u d u and we have similarly f s inverse f which is f x and we have 2 over pi we take 0 to infinity f hat s alpha sin alpha x d alpha. So, this is the Fourier sine transform Fourier sine transform Fourier sine transform and this is inverse inverse Fourier trans Fourier sine transform. There are different versions available in the uh, literature. So, we can have here completely 2 over pi and then can remove here this factor or vice versa. So, but we will follow this uh, that the same factor is sitting um, for both. So, we now quickly go for some uh, important properties of uh, these uh, transforms properties of Fourier sine transform and Fourier cosine transform. So, the one linearity which holds for for all these integral transforms. So, we have a f plus b g and this will be a the constant times the Fourier cosine transform of f plus b the Fourier cosine transform of g or similarly for the sine if we have a f plus b g we have a f s plus b f s g. The second which is a important uh, property and we will not discuss more properties uh, uh, for this sine and cosine transform, but this will be useful. So, let f x be continuous and absolutely integrable on x axis. Also, we let this f prime x be piecewise continuous on h finite interval and this f x tends to 0 as x tends to infinity then. So, this is a, a similar condition what we have this left and right derivatives exist. So, this is a, a slightly stronger condition than that. So, what we have in this case that the Fourier cosine of the derivative will be f Fourier sine of the function f minus 2 over pi and f 0 and we have for f sine f prime x as minus alpha f Fourier cosine transform of of f. So, let us go quickly to the proof. So, we have Fourier cosine transform of f prime x square root 2 over pi 0 to infinity f prime x and cos alpha x dx. So, we have 2 over pi and then we take the integrate by parts, we integrate by parts here cos alpha x limit 0 to infinity minus 0 to infinity we have f x and sin alpha x into minus alpha because this is the differentiation of this with the minus sign will appear. So, what we have 2 over pi as x approaches to infinity this f will go to 0. So, we have minus f 0 and minus minus plus 
alpha and this is the Fourier sine transform Fourier sine transform with this 1 over. So, we take this 2 square root 2 over pi uh, with this term and this is Fourier sine transform of f x. So, this was Fourier cosine transform of f prime x. So, we also have we also have if we go for the second order derivative that means f prime x. So, we have minus square root 2 over pi first derivative by this formula this was for first derivative and plus alpha f sin and f prime x and now we assume here in addition to f f prime also goes to 0 as x goes to infinity then only we will get this and then we apply 2 over pi f prime 0 minus this you will see in a minute that f sin of f prime or, or a function is minus alpha square and f cosine we will get f x. So, this is this and similarly we can uh, go for the sine function. So, for sine we have f sin and the f prime x with the similar uh, a trick we can have we will get minus alpha f cosine f x and for the second derivative we have the f sine for the second derivative of x is square root 2 over pi alpha f 0 minus alpha square f sine f x. So, here we have introduced uh, this uh, Fourier uh, cosine and sine transform we started with the Fourier uh, integral uh, representation of a function and then we introduce this Fourier sine and cosine transform. So, in the next lecture we will continue with this Fourier sine and cosine transform with the help of examples and then go for the Fourier transform. So, more on this in the next lecture. Thank you. Goodbye.